In the previous few videos, we discussed the concepts of low stakes and high stakes decisions. We discussed their importance and discussed how to approach low stakes decisions using the maximum expected value principle. In this video, I would like to continue the discussion on this topic using an example from investments. Suppose you have a couple of hundred dollars left over every month and you decide to invest that money. Assume you have two options, stocks or real estate, and you want to know which is the better choice. Of course, by now, we know that each option has uncertainty and randomness, so no answer would be absolute, but we can increase our chances of success by looking at the highest expected value of our return. Looking at the past 100 years or so, stocks have had better returns on average than real estate. Let's say over a period of time, stocks have had a 7% return adjusted for inflation and real estate only 2%. This is a huge difference because over time, the power of compound interest takes hold. Of course, no one can guarantee that the future returns will be similar to the past, but in the absence of any other information, that might not be a bad assumption. So the answer to our original question may now seem obvious. You would pick stocks, but we need to dig a little deeper than that. Suppose I choose to invest in stocks. I should also take advantage of the diversification principle, which is very closely related to the law of large numbers. This principle is essentially the well-known saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket. In order to reduce your risk, it is smart to invest in multiple stocks rather than just one. If one stock collapses, you have not lost all of your money. Remember the coin toss model for the stocks that we discussed previously. Here, if you are diversifying by investing in many stocks, you are basically investing in more coin tosses from different coins, so you are taking more advantage of the law of large numbers. Now, let's go back to the question of stocks versus real estate. In these kinds of decisions, we have to look at many factors other than the returns of each investment. For example, one of the other advantages of investing in stocks over real estate is the low maintenance involved. With stocks, you just buy some and it either increases or decreases. I myself spend maybe 10 minutes per month on my stock investments because they are so low maintenance. This is important because time is very valuable, which I relate to the issue of the cost of the decision itself. When making a decision such as this, we need to be aware of how much time it will take up. For example, if I instead choose to buy a rental property, it is going to be a huge amount of work and upkeep. Of course, not everyone is in the same situation. For example, if you are an expert in locating good real estate deals and also enjoy fixing up houses, etc., you may choose to invest in real estate. For me personally though, I would much rather save time and energy by choosing to invest in stocks. Another important thing to keep in mind when choosing an investment is liquidity. You can sell your stock at whatever point. It is a very liquid market. On the other hand, you can just get rid of a rental property at the drop of a hat. It takes much, much more to sell a house than it takes to sell the stocks. With the stocks, you can buy as much as your savings will allow. But in buying a rental property, you would need a down payment, etc. Again, this is all from my point of view, but it demonstrates things to think about in addition to the expected value of return when you are considering investing. With a higher expected value comes more fluctuations though. So you may be taking more of a risk if you invest in stocks over real estate here. You must be prepared to lose money if you invest in stocks. But remember, in order to gain things in life, you must be willing to take risks and experience some losses along the way. Keeping all of these factors in mind, for people who would like a low maintenance and liquid investment, a diversified portfolio of stocks seems like a better option than investing in real estate in most cases. This is also, as we said, consistent with the expected value principle. Note that there are other issues that you need to consider and they are related to your specific situations such as taxes and so on. This scenario was a good example of how to approach not only a low harm situation, but specifically one that deals with finances. In future videos, we discuss high impact events and decisions as well as situations wherein we cannot easily quantify possible values of outcomes. This seems to be the case for many of the decisions that we face in our daily lives.